Hey everybody, in this video we're taking a look at the H9 Looper. This is a looper with a lot of great features, including different playback speeds, multiple dub and play modes, reverse, MIDI sync, and more. Let's start by going over some of the more basic features in the H9 app. At the bottom you'll see buttons for record, play, stop, and clear. On the H9, the record and play functions are triggered with the left foot switch. The H9 displays R when recording, P for playback, and D when overdubbing. Pressing the right foot switch stops the loop. To clear the loop, double tap the right foot switch. These controls can be mapped to an aux switch, which will be shown later in the video. Parameters can also be controlled via MIDI. On the top left of the screen, we have a mix control between the dry signal and the looper playback. Let's jump over to the decay control. This allows for each layer to decay as a new layer is overdubbed. When set to zero, the loop never decays. When set to 100, previously saved audio completely decays each time through the loop when dubbing. To hear what the other controls do, let's begin playback. The play length control allows us to adjust the length of the loop, convenient for trimming the loop to a short sample. The play start control determines the point at which the loop starts playing, which we can use to find a sample to play over. Play speed adjusts the playback speed of the loop. Here, 100 is normal speed and 200 is double speed. Fifty is half speed and 25 is quarter speed. The negative numbers mean we've entered reverse playback. The playback speed control will have a different result depending on what recording speed is used. For example, here I've recorded at normal speed, which then allows for the loop to be sped up and slowed down. But if I were to record at, say, quarter speed, I would then be able to speed up the loop at a greater multiplier. Instead of just being able to double the speed, I could increase the speed by eight times. We'll explore this more in a bit. The resolution allows for the loop to be quantized into musical intervals. First we have octaves, then octaves and fifths, then a dominant seventh chord, then half steps, and finally smooth, which allows for a gradual shift in speed and pitch. Here I found a pitch down sample to play on top of. Changing the loop length to a very short sample and scrubbing through the loop is a great way to find drone-like sounds.
Let's check out the dub modes. Latch works like a normal looper, making the overdub switch latching. Punch makes the overdub function momentary. When using either of the two replace modes, dubbed audio replaces looped audio. Here I'm using the replace punch mode to have my overdub replace the loop when the foot switch is held down. Now for the play modes. Auto play functions like a normal looper, going back to the beginning of the loop and continuously playing through the loop. Changing the play mode to once allows us to trigger our loop as a one shot. Loop mode enters a stop state when recording reaches the max length, and reverse direction allows the play control to toggle between reverse and normal playback. Let's check out some of the tempo sync features. In this example, I'll set the H9 to receive an incoming MIDI clock from a drum machine. Doing this keeps the loop in the H9 always in tempo with the drum beat. For this to work, the H9's MIDI input clock needs to be enabled. Now we can have many aspects of the H9 looper quantized to the drum machine. I've predetermined the loop length to be 8 beats so that I only need to use the foot switch to start recording. The H9 will automatically begin playback after it records for 8 beats. Stopping the beat on the drum machine automatically sends a MIDI stop message to the H9 that stops playback. It sends a MIDI start message when beginning playback. The two units stay in sync even when adjusting playback speed. Here I'm using the Barn 3 OX9 aux switch to adjust playback direction and to flip the octave. Start and length controls are now quantized to the beat. The Barn 3 Tesla tap switch is set to trigger playback from the beginning of the loop.
Let's hear one more example that explores a different recording speed. When set to normal speed, the looper can record for a maximum of 12 seconds. We're able to get more time out of the looper by decreasing the record speed. Having this set to quarter speed gives us a maximum record time of 48 seconds, but results in reduced playback quality. However, this can be used to get an intentional lo-fi sound. The looped audio has a bit crushed quality that can be sought after for certain types of music. This can be further degraded using the filter. Since I recorded at quarter speed, I can now increase the playback speed by 8 times or slow down the loop by choosing a different resolution. So there is an overview of the H9's powerful looper. You can find more details and a complete list of features at eventideaudio.com.